Good morning, High Point family. I hope and pray that you all had an amazing Christmas day to yesterday together. And I really am excited about our first Sunday that we get to be back together next week. But as we were closing out this year, and I was looking over my notes from all my last sermons and messages, I began to think about all of the big things that happened this last year and things that I stressed about and worried about. But you know, as I would go into the new year, it was often the little things in my life that caused me the most stress and damage that I wasn't even focused on. So what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you just for a few minutes today as you and your family are sitting there about some of the little things in life that actually can do more harm than all the big things that we worry and stress over. You know, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, it says that the master was full of praise and well, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount so now I will give you even more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. And I look at that and I'm thinking, what was Jesus meaning here? Because he was saying that when you're faithful in the little things, that's when I'm gonna give you the ability to be trusted and faithful over a lot more things. Because we're not all rewarded the same because we're rewarded based on what we're faithful in. And so it's often the little things in life that rob us of God of trusting us to do the bigger things. I don't know about you, but in 2022, I wanna do great things for God. I wanna do even bigger than we ever hoped for or dreamed or imagined. So again, as we finish out this year, it's our last Sunday together, we're, we're via online. I wanna challenge us, every one of us, you and your family, to examine your life. I want us to trust God, like I said, for big stuff this next year, to do bigger things than we ever hoped that God could do. So, with that being said, we've got to nail the little stuff to be able to be trusted with the big stuff. I know it's been cold the last couple of days and last few weeks, and as, whenever it gets cold, it's kind of like I'm like, you know, I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for the beach. And one thing that I, I love about the beach is going and getting in the water, and, and every time I get in the water, there's one thing that I always look for, and maybe you do too, I look for sharks. And Shark Week, every single year, it doesn't help at all because I start thinking about the sharks and are they gonna get me? And sometimes it scares me so much that I can't even enjoy being in the water because I'm so alert and aware of what's swimming around me. You know, I've told this story so many times and many of you probably heard it about when I was younger that my mom wanted to be able to enjoy the beach with uh, us as her young children. So she took us to see Jaws the night before and we went to the beach the next day and we were terrified. We sat there on the shore and we were afraid to even put our feet in the water because we just knew that Jaws was gonna come and eat us and pull us into the water. But I've been to the beach millions and millions of times and I can't ever recall that I actually saw a shark that came close to us. Now I did see a dolphin one time and it about gave me a heart attack. But I think about in that movie Jaws, that music that would play in the background, don't you know that life would be so much easier if when bad things were about to happen that we would get some sound effects like bum bum, bum bum. You know, it doesn't happen because if that did, we would know that something bad was going to happen. And then when it does, first the water turns yellow and then it turns red. And some of y'all will get that a little bit later. But we spend all of our life looking for sharks. But you know, how many times have we ever gone to the beach and somebody said, oh, you better watch out for the jellyfish? Because do you realize jellyfish are way more dangerous than even sharks? Because more people die every single year from death by jellyfish than they do by sharks. You know, I've never taken a walk in the park and somebody has said to me, um, oh, you better look out for the killer bees or look out for the bees because I don't know if you realize this, but more people are killed every year by bees than jellyfish and shark combined. So we spend our lives looking for these big sharks. Many of you right now are trying to think of all the big things in your life that have been holding you back. But I'm here today to tell you to, to maybe examine some of the little small things. Because whether we go to the water or not, there may not be a shark that can get us, but there's these little things swimming around in our lives that may not be as big or scary, but they can be very dangerous in our lives. So I want to think about this next year. What are the little things that have been holding me back? Because I spend all my time trying to overcome the, the big issues. We focus on the big sins, you know, big to us, you know, because sin is all the same to God. But we spend all of our life and our focus and our energy focusing on all these big things that need to change. And maybe you need to stop and going into 2022, not so much focus on the big things, but what are the little things in life that God's wanting you to focus on? The smaller things that are actually maybe even more of a bigger threat in your life. So why do we do this? Why do we focus on the big things? Because a lot of times it's the small things, they're not that intimidating. 
I mean, when I see a jellyfish, I don't freak out. When I see a bee, I don't always freak out, but they can do a lot of harm. And in life, it really is often the small things that we don't even give any, any credence to that can cause the most upset in our lives. You know, in Song of Solomon, chapter two, verse 15, it says, catch all the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. So what is it saying here? It's saying, look out for the little foxes, because they're the ones that are gonna the spoil the whole vineyard. Because foxes, they cause a lot of damage, they cause a lot of mischief, and they spoil the vines, and they, they destroy the fruit that's hanging from them. Because when the vines are full of fruit, they hang lower. And those low-hanging fruits, those, those gifts, those talents that you and I have, that's exactly what the fox is gonna go after. And that fox is the enemy in our life. He's sneaky, he's crafty. And oftentimes we're looking to protect and cover up the big areas of our lives, and the enemy is just looking to snatch the, the smaller fruits in your life to have a bigger win. So what does it mean to catch the little foxes? Well, it means stop sin at its first appearance. Because it's often the little sins, the small struggles that we think that aren't that big of a deal, that nobody else matters and, and, and everybody else struggles with it. It's those smaller little sins that cause the most damage in our lives. It's those little appetites that we don't pay attention to. And so what I'm challenging today to do is before we go into this new year, let's stop and let's think. Are there any little habits, any little frustrations, little struggles, little sins that I struggle with that have caused a lot more damage in my life that I've, that I've realized and I've just kind of given them a glance over and a gloss over and not paid much attention to it? Don't let 2022 be the year that the little things spoil your life. If we keep ignoring the things that the Bible warns us about, they can destroy us. Because so often, like I said, we're focused on looking out for the big sharks, but ignoring the little jellyfish and the bees. So again, as we close out 2021, what area of your life have you convinced yourself that ah, I've got this, it's not that big of a deal, it's not causing that much of a struggle, nobody even really notices it or realizes it, that it's there, but you see the effects in your life. You know, because nobody ever plans to fail, but it's the little foxes that get us every time. You know, even in a great marriage, Every great marriage succeeds and every good employee uh, moves forward and every good business uh, manages to succeed as well. And it's the little things that do the, the greatest catapulting of our lives forward. I mean, I think of Chick-fil-A. It's that little bitty phrase of my pleasure that makes all the difference. You know, if I'm having a bad day, if I wanna uh, have a, a, a pick me up, man, you go to Chick-fil-A and those people waiting on you, they make you feel like a million dollars. And it's the little bitty things that nobody else notices that make the biggest difference. You know, that's what Jesus told his servant when he gave him some talents to manage. We've all probably heard that story of the managing of the talents. And he said in Matthew 25, 21, the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you even more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. You know, our biggest wins in life often come from our ability to manage the smaller minor details of life because it's the little details that do make the biggest difference. It's those small little touches. I mean, we think about it. Reading a few scriptures and, and spending some time in prayer, they may not seem like that big of a deal, but it can make a huge impact in your year and in your life. As we're heading into the new year, we're gonna be doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. And you might think, well, that's not that big of a deal, but it could make the biggest return in your life. You know, when you get upset and somebody, uh, cuts you off in traffic or you get mad and you want to speak your mind, sometimes biting your tongue and not saying what you want to say can save a relationship. You know, giving that customer uh, a little extra attention might get you that promotion or might cause your business to, to, business to succeed even more. So as we close out this year, my final message to everyone for, for 2021, I want to be determined to not let focusing on the big sharks and giving them more attention than they deserve at the expense of ignoring the little things that have been robbing me all year long that I haven't even noticed. Because it's often the little things that hold us back. They cause the greatest danger, but they can also cause the greatest good. So in closing, before we get together next Sunday, our first Sunday of the year, and I'm so excited, I wanna challenge you to ask yourself, what are the little foxes in my life that I might not even realize they were there that are robbing me of a greater freedom and victory in my life. Because it's often the little things that are holding us back. 
and it's being determined to let those things to not stop us from moving forward, but making sure that we, we examine our lives and saying, God, what is it that you want me to see? I, don't, I even want to challenge you to be bold enough to ask your family, what are some little foxes you see in my life? What are some little things that maybe I'm unaware of, blind spots, and then you have to have the courage to actually listen to them and let's deal with them. That way we can do bigger things in 2022 because I want this to be our best year ever. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to bow your heads with me right there. And I want us to pray. Father, I thank, the, that, thank you that as we close out this, this year of 2021 and we're heading into a new year, God, that we go into this new year focusing on everything that you put before us. But God, I pray that we don't focus on the, the big things at the expense of missing out on the little things that can make such a huge impact. Give us the heart and the eyes and the ability to see those things. And Lord, I ask you right now to help this to be the best year that we've ever had. Now with your head still bowed, maybe you're sitting there with your family right now and you don't know the Lord. You've never invited Jesus into your heart. Well, right now here today, in the end of December, Jesus can free you from every sin, forgive you of every sin you've ever committed and give you a brand new fresh start to go into 2022. So as your head, head is still bowed, I want you to pray this prayer with me in your heart right there. Dear Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And today I give you my life. And I want to thank you for saving me and for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with me this morning. I hope that you and your family have a great rest of your year. And again, I can't wait to see you in our first Sunday of the year in January. But church, I love you. And if you made that decision to accept Christ in your life today, I want you to do me one thing. I want you to email us here at the church and I want you to let us know or call us and let us know about that decision because I am so proud of each and every one of you. And church, I love you and I can't wait to see you this next Sunday.